Rock and Roll Geek Show 737. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, it's the one and only Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name's Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Wednesday, September 28th, 2016, when I'm recording this show, and it is 6.30 p.m. exactly. And this is a bonus episode. I just did a show two days ago, and I'm already doing another show. Why am I doing another show? Because... A friend of the show is in my studio right now. He is a, um, I don't know if you know, but there are several donation levels on my site, um, on rockandrollgeek.com. You can just um, be a regular donor, or you can do something called a co-host donor, and uh, you pay $100, and you come in my studio, and I let you program the show, and it's basically your show, and I'm your sidekick, and... Today, I am the sidekick of a friend of the show who's already a longtime donor, uh, Stephen Mascord. How are you doing, Steve? I'm good, Michael. How are you? Um, it's great to be in San Francisco, and uh, no one calls me Stephen except my mother. But it's just because that email address you've got, it says Stephen. So okay, Steve. well, thanks Steve for coming on, Stephen. No, no, it's great to be here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen is uh, obviously not from San Francisco. Where are you from? Uh, I'm North orig- Carolina? I'm originally from Wollongong, New South Wales, and I live in Sydney, New South Wales. He's an Australian. He's an Aussie guy. What you know, you know how I feel about the Australians. Uh, they are my favorite people in the world, next to the blacks and the Mexicans. <laughs> All right. <laughs> By the way, the food was outstanding. Thanks oh, for dinner. Yes, I fed him too. He did not do a home invasion donation. Home invasion, home invasion donation is actually um, when, if you donate $200, I make you and your girlfriend dinner, and I, and I give you all the beer you can drink. So I'm giving him a special... Uh, I made him dinner. He's drinking all, all the beer he wants at my house. We're drinking. What are you drinking right now, Steve? Mask, Stephen? Of course, it's Tecate. Exactly. You're going to call me Stephen now. That's all I have. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to call me Stephen for the rest of the show. I actually have other <laughs> beer here, too, if you want. You can, I have a height beer, and I have... Um, one of the well, I have one of these um, almanac craft pilsner. If you want to try one of those, that looks awesome. But I'm still All right. halfway through my second. And I also have a, um, a Japanese beard in there somewhere too. So. I think one of the attractions of doing this was that all the listeners want to know what it's like here. Oh yeah, what is what was your first? Now you want, said you wanted to do the show because you wanted to see what my studio looked like when you walked in. What was your very first impression that went through your mind? Be honest. Uh, I'm talking about when you walked through my entryway and into I the, it was through very, the bathroom. I thought it was very to- punk rock. It's very like you actually said. Um, you put your beer down over there. You might have to move some stuff out of the way to put to uh-huh. put the beer down. But um, it's very punk rock. There's um for Australian listeners. There's actually a flyer from 1990 here. Uh, the Angels with Cheap Trick. I, I saw several shows on that tour. And there's a Kiss Best of Solo albums uh, a framed photo. There's an autographed Joan Jett thing. And then there's like this high shelving, and it's got like rock biographies and a lot of uh, vinyl. And uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. You see what that DVD is there in the very top? What's that? Angels Live. Exactly. Which Which era is it from? <coughs> uh, I believe that is when they played the prison. Did they play a prison? Isn't that Rose Tattoo? Bogo Road. Oh, maybe. Yeah, and and. Um, the Divinals played that too. Yeah. I don't know where it's several different live things. I think they did play a prison though. Yeah, yeah it's probably, probably Bob um, um, Spencer. Bob Spencer with his era, right? Which right, is yeah. Beyond Salvation era. Yeah, yeah, which is my era that I really got my into. favorite. Yeah, my yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, too. Recently got to know James Morley, who was the um, he's the bassist in, and now he's a lead guitarist, and he was going to be lead guitarist in Doc's band until. Unfortunately, he plays, we lost Doc. Yeah, he plays guitar in the not in the Angels now. No, not now because that lineup never yeah. happened because of yeah. Doc. But uh, but yeah, no. Bob um, Spencer playing in Doc's version of the Angels too. Yes, well, around Beyonce. Yeah, he was going to be in that lineup. Yeah, but but since then, like he's 
He's got up on stage with the current lineup a couple of times. Yeah, and Bob Spencer's all, oh. got a new. I, I, heard, I played his song. I don't know if his who, whole album. Who are came these out. people? Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. Does yeah. it have the whole album out yet? I don't think so. No, I, don't I think, think right he yet. actually uh, contacted me and sent me uh, several different mixes of that song. I actually gave him your email address. Oh yeah, 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 yeah and yeah. he he said he wanted to do a show, and I never. Um, either I dropped the ball, or he listened to my show and. <laughs> decided that it wasn't <laughs> worth doing i don't know i'm sure that's not the case i'm sure that's not the case all right so uh you're here yep do you th was the, is the studio bigger or smaller than you uh thought it would be um you know it's you pretty much small no it's pretty want. much what i i expected i mean i did, haven't spent like weeks trying to visualize what your studio looks like but it's kind of what i it's kind of what i thought i really like the area like ocean beach it's so um like we went past this big lagoon and we're, we're very close to the yeah, beach. Yeah, that was called Lake Merced. Yeah, yeah. I used to shoot guns right there. There was a gun club right there and uh, there's a gun club. It was all like 90-year-old men who would shoot clay targets. And right next to that gun club, there's a police shooting range. The city shut down the gun club so all the 90-year-old men had nowhere to shoot guns. So that's Lake Merced. And back in the 30s, that was a actually um, people used to hunt ducks on that lake commercially oh, wow. back in the uh, early days. I mean, that's a fact that nobody cares about, and I'm sure can you, you don't You either. can't walk there from here, though, can you? It's too uh, far to walk. You can, it's about a mile from here. All right, yeah, yeah. And we're I very close to the beach, and there's some cool bars, and there's a motel down the street that has hot tubs, and, yes. and there's a vacancy tonight. Yes, that's uh, Robert's Motel. That's actually <laughs> yeah. a cool motel. They were filming a big uh, movie down the street there, and I don't know what movie it was, but they had a bunch of trailers and stuff around there last week. So Another, this is a part of San Francisco I wouldn't otherwise come to, but I've come to do this, so it's awesome. Good to see I you like it out here. It's like the suburbs. Yeah. So now I'm going to ask you an uncomfortable question. Okay. Uh, you never did pay me for the donation. All right. <laughs> it's in my pocket. <laughs> ah, there I knew that. I was distracted because I left my f first. I left my f um, camera. In the Uber. Oh, that's right. He took an Uber and... I've never booked my own Uber before, ever in my life. Do you have Uber in Australia? Yes. 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 But you've never used it in your entire life. I've used it, but other people, like I've been... Like, in oh, fact, you... we went to Angel Show on Uber with a guy called Jimmy Papworth, who might be listening, who's... Um, hey, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. He's based in Vegas, and he's an Aussie guy. He's a guitarist. Uh -huh. and, and we went to... Uh, and he, we took Uber, and they always say, you know, the old cliche about mus musicians being a bit stingy, trying to save money here and there. He paid for the Uber. He refused to accept any recompense from me, so... Um, um, but I've been in Uber many times, but I just, I've never actually booked it myself. And yeah, I left the, I left my, um, camera in the back. So, so what kind of camera is it? A nice camera? Lum Lumix camera. It's very good at gigs and it's got really like great audio, you know? Uh huh. They usually don't let you sneak cameras in. You'd have, you would have to smuggle that camera in. You're, you're going to a show after this, after we record this. What show are you going I'm to? I'm going to see Mr. Big. Mr. Big. Shaki will probably be there. Mm. Mr. Big. Who's on, who, who's opening for Mr. Big? You know, it's something. They're a, they're a in, they're an instrumental band. Um, I can't remember what they call it. It's two words. It's like points north, north point. Oh no. yeah, I know who they are. Yeah, points yeah. north. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm. They so, have a actually. They have a bass player. Um, his name is Uriah Duffy, I believe, and the guy is a shredding bass player. He writes for Bass Player Magazine. All right. Uh, so they're it, not kids. They're, they're, yeah, either the Butlers or Featherwits played. A, they were on the bill, and they're really good. Not my thing, but uh, <clears throat> they're virtuosos. Yeah, I, I had to listen to them on uh, Spotify, and I'm like, you know, they sounded good, but I, you know, an instrumental band. I'm just going to be nursing my beer, aren't I? So I'm, yeah. I could do that here. I think know? that's the band with Uriah Duffy. Uriah Duffy's like a bass uh, master, like puts me to shame on the beat. But I think he wears it like. You know, super high on necklace. Mm. And, yeah, not my thing, but they're playing with Mr. Big. It's every all the original members of Mr. Big. No, the drummer has got Parkinson's, hasn't he? So I think oh, he, huh. I think he, I think he sits out and then he comes in and does an acoustic thing. I believe uh, it's Pat Torpy. I, I believe he's actually in the tiny percentage of people with Parkinson's who's actually shown signs of recovery. He's improving. Huh. But uh, yeah, so so they've got another drummer who, for most of the show, and I'm, I can't remember who it is, Michael. And sorry. it's Billy Sheehan, Eric Martin, and Paul Gilbert. Exactly. Yeah. I actually like Paul Gilbert's new latest solo album. All right, I, I, I haven't heard it. No, uh, I, I read see if about I can it. Find a little bit of that Paul Gilbert. I, I 
I'm not going to play the entire song. By the way, uh, if you're a donor of the Rock and Roll Geek Show, like a uh, friend of the show, Stephen Mascord, thank you for donating. If you're a Patreon donor, you're not getting charged for this episode. This is a bonus episode. All right. So since, since Stephen Mascord is actually paying a large donation out of his pocket, I'm not charging you, friends. All right, I'm going to see if I can find um, what band what did I say we're looking for? Uh, Paul Gilbert. Paul Gilbert, yes. New exactly. new solo album, yeah? Paul, da-da-da, da-da. All right, let me see here. There we go. Yeah, it's virtuoso music. I like that so far. All right, I'll let you clear it a little bit more. <laughs> Everybody use your eyes, look at this beautiful day. Still like it? Everybody use your ears, listen to me when I say now. Everybody use your goddamn turn signal. Ah, there you go. Yeah, I've heard it before. It's kind of a novelty song. Isn't it? Like the Bob Spencer song, Who Are These People, which is about social media. Right, yeah, Yeah. I guess. (laughs) So when you uh, donate to the – when you do a, uh, a co-host donation, I let you program the show. So I, I, all the music we're going to play is your music that you want to hear. So I'm not going to um, play Paul Gilbert unless that's what you want to hear. But uh, We've already heard some of it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Now the first song that we got queued up is actually a band called the Casanovas, who you may have played on the show before. I don't know if you have. They're from Melbourne, and they're very, very cheap trick. They've been around for a long, long time, haven't they? They have. They have. Um, I think they had a hit song in the United States. What was the name of the, the big, huge hit back in the 80s or 90s? Oh, I don't know if it's that long ago. I, I think they would have been in the 2000s. I saw them on, uh, you know, on the, one of the music channels you get on cable TV here. I, I saw them on that, but that would have been 10 years ago, not what 20. What song was that? Oh. Uh, Maybe can't shake it, or uh, I don't know. So what? Are, what are we gonna? Uh, well, I just play? thought well, it's my third day in California. I've still got jet lag, so I thought, um, and I heard this uh, on a uh, it, on the Gold Coast in a pub the other day, and I thought this is a good song. I want to play oh, this. It's called- how how long have you been here? I'll, I'll I'll save that. I'll save the rest of the talk till after this song. Here's the Casanovas, California. <laughs>
Mm. Okay, there you go. Did you like that? Or? Uh, yes, that was good. Mm. Uh, I guess it's a little like Cheap Trick. I've already heard the cast knows. They're well known. And I, the reason I probably don't have it on the iTunes is because I've had a crash and lost a bunch of stuff. But yeah, I like it. So what are you doing? What You didn't come out to to San Francisco all the way from Australia just to be on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. And see my I, I caught an Uber from Erskineville. I did. <laughs> what <laughs> is the main reason you're coming to San Francisco? Beside uh, well, basically, I've got, a, I've got a wedding to go to in Ireland on Monday. And uh, I could have... The normal way is to go... Um, Dubai, Dubai, Dublin or whatever. And I just went the long way around because I hadn't been to the Bay Area in quite a few years. I had some friends to catch up with. I'm going to see uh, a gig tonight. I'm going to see a gig tomorrow. I'm going to see a gig on Friday. Then I'm going to a rugby league game in Wilmington, Delaware on Saturday. So you're in, wait a minute, you're in San Francisco for how long? I had three, this is my last night of three. What have you done since you've been here? Uh, the first night uh, I went to meet up with um, some friends of my wife and there was a mix up and they didn't show up. Uh, but then my other friend from Boston showed up, so we had a night out. And then last night we got stuck in traffic, um, and we didn't even get out of the city. I was an hour late for dinner in Oakland, and I actually jumped out of the car and called the BART. The traffic was so bad. So that's what I've done, basically. Yeah, just a lot of miscommunications and disastrous clusterfucks, basically. So you have done basically nothing. You've been bored during the day when you're here? No, because of jet lag, I've been sleeping. So oh, you've just been sleeping all day? You didn't go to like Fisherman's Wharf and... Uh... I have kind of done that. I've done that before, so I didn't I, I didn't want to squeeze in like too much um, sightseeing stuff. I walked down to uh, the port. I, walk, you know, I saw the Bay Bridge, took some photos, which are in that camera uh-huh. that's in the cab at the moment. Um, and uh, But I, yeah, I, like I've been here three or four times before and I think I was here in like about 97 for weeks. My friend Dan lived here and I was here for weeks and weeks, so we did all the tourist stuff then, you know. And you're going to a show tomorrow. What's the show tomorrow? I didn't tell you this um, off air because I thought you might make fun of me. I'm going to the first show (laughs) on Stripers to Hell with the Devil Tour. That's not in San Francisco. No, it's in Atlanta. So you're flying to Atlanta tomorrow? Yes. And then I'm going on to Sioux Falls on Friday. And actually it was not expensive. Like the the cost of the flight would have been the same as like a one-way to Dublin direct um, to, to stop in San Francisco, Atlanta, Sioux Falls, and then Philadelphia. So do you normally... So you're going to Sioux Falls to see Dawkins. The, the yeah, region. yeah. So do you have to fly to Atlanta to go to Sioux Falls? Or are you making a special trip to Atlanta just to see Striper? <laughs> Um, it might be the latter. <laughs> you made a special trip. Why, they're not playing anywhere around here? I thought they were an L.A. band. They are, but it's, it's, I only had that window. I had to go to a so wedding. They're on tour. And yeah, you... yeah, it's the first show as well. So as a journalist, I find that uh-huh. newsworthy, you know. Yeah, you have to go. So you write it off. I guess. If someone would pay me for the, um, to, for the review, I don't know how much interest so there is. you're going to see Striper tomorrow. Yeah. Then if I go- get there, it's a pretty tight schedule. Then you're going to see Dokken. You're yep. going to, because they're doing a warm up show before the, uh, like the day before. $175 it is, I think, yeah, to get into their warm up yeah. thing. And I, you know, My yeah. friend Chiaki is going to both. All oh, right, cool. I've never met Chiaki. Maybe, maybe I can meet him. You'll see him there. You might see him tonight at Mr. Big. Look for a Japanese guy. I actually, I know um, there's an Aussie guy called Glenn Lease who's, uh, I think he works for one of these, like, I'm not going to say the wrong one, but one of these rock and roll clothing companies or whatever, and he's going to be there this week. And he's had, um, this might be helping him, uh, he's had four people pull out. So he's got four tickets to the Stro- the Dock and Reunion show to sell. So Glenn Lease, if you, if you want to buy a ticket, there you go. All right. Anybody wants to go to the Dock and Reunion show in <laughs> South, Sioux, Fall, is Sioux Falls? Sioux Falls, South Dakota. South Dakota, right near the where the Indians are protesting probably, uh, the pipeline. Don't break through the protest, but if you want to go see Dokken, contact, what's his name again? Glenn Lease. Glenn Lease. <laughs> and he'll sell you a ticket for uh, face value, which is probably about 300 bucks. <laughs> it wasn't that expensive. Was it 50 bucks? It was 50 bucks. Yeah. 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 I'm not a Dokken fan, but a lot of people are, apparently. You know what I mean? I think, I think Don's voice is actually quite good at the start of tours. <laughs> At the start of tours, first uh-huh. show. If it's yeah. ever going to be good, it'll be good the first night, you know? Yeah, well, you'll see Don, Don. You'll at least see uh, George Lentz before they get into a fight. They're not going to f- get into a fight and break up because they have too much money to be made in... In Japan. Uh, in, J- in Japan, yes. Yeah. What is this? My wife just brought in something. Ah. Oh, the woman brought in... Uh, I went to the Giants game last night, and it was a special event, and it was like... a. 
You had to buy a special. This is a side note here. You had to buy because something just came. You had to buy a, a special event ticket, and you could get a San, a San Francisco Giants hat with a San Jose Sharks logo, which is the, the hockey team in San Jose, which made it to the Stanley Cup. I've actually been to see them. I have seen them. My daughter found out I was going last night, and she lives in Washington now. I'm going to visit her this weekend, and she said, please get me a hat. And I didn't have a special event ticket, so I couldn't get a hat. And I went and asked him. I said, can I upgrade my ticket to a special event? Oh, the t- everybody wanted the hats. They're all sold out. So I, th- I w- thought I would look for a hat, and I found one on eBay this morning. 50 bucks this fucking hat cost me, right? I'm br- surprising my daughter with this overpriced But it's an Amazon box. Item. She just stuck it in the box. Right, lady. Yeah. She was going to mail it to me, and I sent her. And after I paid $50 for this piece of shit hat... <laughs> She delivered it to me, so I, so yeah. There you go. My daughter uh, better not complain about that hat. Fifty dollars. So yeah, I digress. All right. So you're going to so you're going to see Striper tomorrow. Then you're going to go see Dawkin. Then what? Then I'm going to um, all by yourself. You're not. Oh, I, I know people who are going to Dawkin, as I've already explained. But but uh, but then on the um on the Saturday, I'm going to a rugby league international in Wilmington, Delaware, the United States versus Canada, and my friend's son is the assistant coach of the U.S. team. He's an Australian. I guy. didn't know U.S. had a uh, rugby team. They do. They got a rugby union team, which they that's big, and rugby league is the smaller of the two. And you are you are a, a rugby you write a, about yeah rugby. yeah, and and I just tell Americans I, I'm a rugby writer, but. I, I'm a, I cover Rugby League, which is the 13-a-side one, which is the one that is internationally not as big. So, yeah, that's what I cover. But it's, okay. it's massive in, uh, in, 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 in Sydney and Brisbane. And, and blah, that's blah, blah. what you do for a living? You write about rugby? Yeah, yeah. I've been doing it since I left school. I actually oh. one of the last generation of people to get a job at a newspaper without going to college or university. So, um, so you, you have a podcast too, right? I do, and that's why, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the podcast is called White Line Fever. That's right, yes. White Line Fever. How yeah. often do you do that show? You know, um, not as often as I used to. Um, I, I, I mean, I, mean, I kind of... Every other day? No, <laughs> no, twice a week? No, no, no. I do it when I have time. So basically, like at the moment, the current episode has got like Cherie Curry, uh, uh-huh. Charlie Bonante... Uh, Michael Wilton and the guy from Scorpion Child on it. You and had them all on one episode. Because the way I do it is, I di- I I dice the fifth. Fi- I dice the fifteen minutes most interviews go for that are organised by record companies. I dice them up into three lots of five, and then I put them. So so Cherie Curry will be on three episodes. So you do like the cattle call interviews. Kind of, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, and I organise some myself as well. Uh-huh. Organise. I try to organise some myself. So. Um, um, yeah, I got I got a friend uh, who uh, who has a you know touring record company whatever in um, in in uh, in Oz and I used to be a music journalist like professionally back like twenty years ago and like a lot of middle aged guys I got nostalgic so I decided to have another go and get involved again you know so do when you do the interviews does the record is there like a publicist on the line and goes okay you have fifteen minutes to talk to us? no and no, it doesn't work like that in fact most of the most of the guys I ring them directly on Skype. Um, and I've and I've still got their numbers in my phone, you know, like like they're not that private. If I right, want, yeah. we could ring, you know, we could ring the drummer from Airborne now if you wanted. I'm sure he wouldn't be happy. I to actually hear from saw us. Airborne two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. They came, they were out here, and I saw them. Were they good? They were great. They're oh, they're always great, but uh, they headlined this time, so I've never seen them headlining. I would rather see Airborne opening because um, I like to see the crowd who's not there to see Airborne. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. The, I like the reaction of the crowd. The surprise have, in their face. They have to win them over. But yeah. so everybody there was uh, there to see Airborne. So mm. was it a big place or? Uh, it was a. It was a club. It was like a three hundred capacity club. There was about two hundred people there. See, I like I that. saw them. Um, I've I saw them play in Yamber in northern New South Wales in front of. 13 people I counted the crowd 13 people but they still rocked out it was like it was Madison Square Garden yeah but but I've also seen them at Sweden Rock I saw them open for Motley Crue in Canada twice and every show is like they don't do bad shows you know they just they're just incredible I saw them on New Year's Eve at the ESPY in Melbourne and um I was telling the drummer this the other day, and he thought I was like a stalker. <laughs> I was like, uh, th- there was a reason I was telling him. I was, you know, I was just talking about how they. Um, well, I figure if you start off with such a small base, and then you get like in in, U- in Europe, they they play theaters, right? I saw them in Leeds last year. They play theaters. You m- must start to think, are things starting to slip away a little bit? You know what I mean? Oh, we've come back to this town, and we've got. 
the response isn't as good. You yeah. know, you would start to get a bit nervous, you know. And and he said no. He said we've never had a, you know, we don't have a plan B, so we're just going to keep going until, you know. I was the first person to enter in the United States to introduce them. As a matter of fact, um, their manager sent me a whole bunch of um, airborne stuff. This is when they got signed to Capital and got dropped and got all their masters. So the, I have the Capital release that never got released. Oh, wow. And then they came out. I don't know what label they for that Running Wild came out. Maybe Run Runner. I don't know. But um, then I, I was at— still got that? Is it still in I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's in the stack somewhere here. <laughs> and I'll, they also sent me a hoodie, a running wild mm-hmm. hoodie. Mm-hmm. And I was at South by Southwest, and I was t- I was hanging out with my friend Jasper, and a guy walked up to me and said, "Are you Michael Butler?" Because he recognized my voice because I have a hick voice, and uh, he's I'm the manager for Airborne, just out of the blue. So yeah, I've I'm actually a- never been to Warrnambool, the town they're from. I've never been there. They're from Warren Warren Warrnambool. Warrnambool, that's right. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice guys. I interviewed them several times. The last time I interviewed them was on video. They were opening, they were playing like, a, I don't know, they were opening for some metal band or something. And uh, I, I brought them new socks. That was a gift I brought them, clean socks. You know, I had <laughs> Palace of the King que- uh, queued up to play, but, but should we change it to Airborne? Whatever it's your show, I'm your sidekick. We haven't kick. we haven't played we haven't played any music. Played What's one Palace song. of King? Palace of the King. Well, um, Palace of the King are from Melbourne, and we will play them. Then Palace of the King are from. I'm, I'm surprised you haven't heard of them. They're from Melbourne. They're starting to get a bit of a following in Europe. They're kind of like Black Crowsy, Led Zeppelin, um, and uh, they're incredible live, like unbelievable live. Um, I saw them opening for the Screaming Jets a couple of years ago, and I've been. Um, you know, singing their praises, et cetera, since. Here's a, here's a, there's a song called, do you, he's got a desk to the left. I know everyone's keen to know. So there's a desk to the left. A desk a, means a mixing board. Mixing board. And then there's and then there's two screens in front of him, and then he's got the proper radio microphones, you know. Yeah, most podcasters uh, do their show on, like, in GarageBand. They will mm. they will put all the music in GarageBand. This is my guess. Is this how you do it? Put all the music in GarageBand, and then you'll talk, and then put the music in, and then get your... I'm not even that professional. I, I talk into a mobile phone and edit it together later, which is very time-consuming. I'd love to yeah. learn to do it live like this. I have to learn to how to do it This is live. easier for me. Yeah. You, you, I don't want to do any editing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard you say that you would actually not do a podcast. If you yeah, it wouldn't be too much fun. <laughs> I like to just turn on the microphone and, and record. The only thing that sucks is if like the recording stops like this backup recording i have it i have it recording into the marantz and then i have a backup uh on this ederol and the backup just fucked up and stopped recording so let's pray to god that the uh original recording doesn't fuck up should we play black heart by the palace of the king uh go ahead it's your show oh what happened okay go ahead it's your show what's happening Turn it up.
Okay, he's taking my picture. Oh. Train wreck. Oh shit! All right, uh, we needed that. Yeah, we had to take a picture for the douchebaggery, so uh, <laughs> forgot where we were. All right. So what do you was think Palace of that? Of the King. It was good. Mm -hmm. It's a little. I'm not a huge Black Crows fan, and it's like a Rival Sons type uh, thing. I like it. It was fine. It was good. I've seen them a couple of times this year. There's a great rock bar in Sydney called Frankie's. Um, and, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see that. I saw Rival Sons open for Black Sabbath in uh, Sydney. Right. And then on a Sunday night, they actually played Frankie's, a pizza place. Frankie's Pizza, Rival Sons played play uh -huh. this place. And it was absolutely incredible, you know. It was packed. Yeah, it was absolutely. I got there at 4 o'clock, which is a, a bit too keen. I was told <laughs> it wasn't necessary to be there that early. But, um, yeah, it was a really good night. And, and, I want to, and I want to play the Lazies a bit later on too, and I saw them just a few weeks ago at Frankie's. So if you're ever in Sydney, I'm not being you know paid to endorse Frankie's, but it's the place to go any night of the week. Are were you a Divinals fan, being from Sydney? Yeah, big big Divinals fan. Yeah, How yeah. old are you? I'm 47. Oh, okay. Right. Mm. Yeah, I had uh, a long time ago. I had uh, Chrissy Amphlett on the show and Mark McEntee. Oh on wow! The show. Wow. I love I love Chrissy Amphlett so much. Yeah, she was like female Angus Young, really. Uh, female uh, du um, Angry Anderson. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what about the tats? You, um, how would how, I love Rose Tattoo? Get, I had I've had uh, Angry Anderson on I think twice. Rank me your and top five had Australian Pete, bands. I also had Peter Wells on the show too. All oh, right, the late great uh -huh. Peter Wells. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, you, tell me your five favorite Australian bands in order. Do you want to count down? Uh, my favorite Australian band is the Angels. Above ACDC, yeah. Yeah, and I love ACDC. I like Skyhooks. Remember them? Yeah, totally, yeah. Um, uh, Divinals are probably my second favorite band. So it would be, it would be uh, well, it would be, let's see, no, wait a second. It would be, first favorite, it would be the Angels. Mm. Then it would be probably the Divinals. Then it would be probably Rose Tattoo. Uh, then it would be Skyhooks. Um... Then everybody else I like probably equally. I love Living End. I like so ACDC aren't in your top five. Well, yeah, they're up there. Yeah, I yeah. guess ACDC would be a like, third one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because cause, cause Skyhooks aren't really a hard rock band or a punk band, no. are they? I mean, you might as well say Midnight Oil 
I, as far as how different they are, you know, there, to the other bands. You know what I mean? There is a biography of the singer for the uh, Skyhooks, and I'm in the biography. Are oh, you really? Yeah. Or not. I saw them play. Sure. I had I had the bass player on my show. And I told him this story. And is that Red Simon? Um, no, uh, no, uh, Greg McCain. Yeah, sorry, Greg. Yeah, Red was a guitarist. Red Simon's. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, and I told him because I saw them in Jacksonville, Florida, opening for Uriah Heep, mm. and that interview was is in the uh, Sheryl biography. Oh, right, it was cool. great. Yeah, I loved Skyhooks. They were. I was. I was. I grew up in the South, and Skyhooks were like way out there. Mm. With the weird costumes and <laughs> yeah, crazy yeah, shit yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. weird songs. And they opened for Uriah Heep and everybody loved, they blew Uriah Heep away. Everybody loved them and Uriah Heep was o just okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, pe I, the, guy on, the guy that was the DJ in Jacksonville, Florida, who I've tried to get on the show and he's kind of a, doesn't, I don't know, he won't come on, but uh, he was responsible for breaking a lot of Australian bands in the United States. They broke A lot of Australian bands first broke in Jacksonville, Florida because of this DJ in Jacksonville, Florida. I think I read about that in the ACDC book. Was uh, it? That uh, Jesse, that... that, uh, that yeah, yeah, Jesse Fink's book. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I've never met Jesse, but he's also a sports writer, you know? He's like a big That's so right, soccer yeah. writer. Yeah, yeah he yeah. came on the show too. I heard that, I heard that, yeah. Yeah, and that guy, uh, he broke the Angels in the United... Well, they, the Angels never broke, but uh, mm. he, play, he played a lot of Angel City. They were called Angel City out here. Mm. Uh, he was the first DJ to play ACDC, I believe. I saw ACDC, very first U.S. tour open for Aria Speedwagon in Jacksonville Coliseum. Wow. <laughs> my, my friend Greg Truman, who lives in New York now, he actually opened for ACDC at, at a school. In Sydney, when Bon oh, Scott nice. was, they were playing schools, you know. Yeah, they were playing. Yeah, universities. I think there's video of that. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I mean, too. that's that's amazing. I mean, Bon Scott. I mean, no. Nah. Yeah, this DJ <laughs> he he played all all the Australian bands. I think he broke the vinyls too, like uh, back when. Nah, prop. No, not the vinyls because they that wasn't the seventies. But this was back in the seventies. Every Australian band he would play he was a big supporter of Australian music. It's it's kind of like um, sometimes it's just sliding doors, isn't it? Whether a band catches or not. Like the Angels always say, you know, they wanted to come back here, and and John Brewster has an issue with the previous management. He thought they could have really broken here if they'd, you know, come back. Yeah, and, well, at, uh, that Beyond Salvation, they got signed to. Um, they were on a major label because um, Axl Rose cited them as a big in influence, and then they got a record deal because of that, supposedly because of Axl Rose, and then they played. Uh, yeah. So that's there's that photo of I think of the whiskey of Axel, yeah. Angry, and Doc. You and know, my you friend said, yeah. Billy Rowe uh, was at that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, the next band is called the Lazies, and they're from the central coast of New South Wales, and they are uh, they have quite a presence in they have quite a presence in Canada. They go back to Canada every six months or whatever, and um, and people love them. Um, and they're amazing live. They're really, really good live. And These are all Australian bands, right? Yes, that's correct. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. All right, there you go. The Lasers. I like that. They're great. I, I, they've been playing that song for like, I think it's, oh, they, they, they've been around anyway for like 15 years. I've seen them in bars and everything. And I think now, like I said, they're going back to Canada every six months. And I think they've got a bit of a presence in, in Canada and they're like, they're friends with Billy Talent and all this sort of stuff. I don't know. So they're, they're, so good luck to them. They deserve all the success that they, they get. You just now posted a picture on the Facebook, and I swear to God, I get uglier every <laughs> fucking day, man. It's brutal. Ugh. My hair is like halfway. It's a horrible picture. You Please actually prepared don't your hair for that photo. You actually like you fluffed did. it up, and you it's still it flat. <laughs> yes, it's still yes. flat and wet and horrible looking. I am fucking hideous looking, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good photo. Mind you, I didn't Ooh. have a close look myself. Ugh, it's brutal. All right, so... Uh, Let's see. You got here when? <laughs> no, God. We're, we've been going on for ages. We're, we're, we're almost done. Um, no, I got here on uh, Monday. I got here got Monday. Your, all right, so you got here Monday. First thing you did when you got off the plane, what did you do? Um, I beer? put my bag in storage and it cost $93. So your bag, bag's in storage at the airport? I, I've got it back now. But I put it in storage because I didn't want to like... I didn't know they had lockers at the airport. No, it's actually like a shop. It's been there forever. Um, it's, it's like, yeah, it's, it's upstairs. Is it through your airline or you, or no, just no, 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 it's just for anybody. It's for anybody. Huh. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. And then, and then I've just had two nights and I'm, I'm going to, um, see Mr. Big later they on. Charge I've had you, three beers. They charge you per day. Yeah. So it must've been like $28 a day or oh, something. Oh, that's not that bad. Yeah, $28 I guess. A I guess. Day. It's my fault for leaving it there that long, I guess. Um, so what, yeah. what's in that big, huge suitcase? Uh, you know what? It's got one thing it's got in it is it's got my uh, suit pack. By the way, I'm the biggest DAD fan on earth. You I, are. Okay. I love DAD. I'm a pretty big DAD I actually fan went to too. I actually went to Denmark to watch them once. Are without you the a pr- ticket. Without a ticket. I actually went there without a ticket and um, I tried to get on the guest list uh, through management and then didn't get back to me or whatever. So I went to this they were playing in this like shopping mall, like shopping mall. And um, I actually, and you know, the Swedes are very polite and like you offer to buy tickets off them like scalpers is, oh my God, no. And I counted 113 people. I asked, do you have a spare ticket? 113 people. And the 113th person, oh yes, I do have a ticket. And I was like, do you want me to pay you like more than the face value? And they looked at me like I was like, you know, suggesting, I don't know, something terrible. And, um, and then when I, so I, I got in and I had the biggest night ever and I got back to my hotel, I checked my email and management said you're on the door. There you go. <laughs> nice. It does it well, then you had an extra ticket. So I, somebody sent me a link to this um, concert that they just recently did. I don't know if you saw it, but it, it was like a streaming of the live, the entire concert. It was so good. They had the coolest stage I've ever seen. Have you seen that stage? It's set it's not up the, like a, it's not the, the 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 couch. Yeah, but that's that was like from Risking It All era. Yeah, that because yeah, they yeah. did Risking It All from top to bottom. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe they did. It was the anniversary of Risking It All. That is the coolest stage I have ever seen in my life. They're actually the first band I saw who had like the uh, the um, is it the LCD screens where the whole stage yeah. was like like a, a big screen at the sports yeah. arena, and so they could change like. The entire stage, the whole stage was video screen, you know, and and that was about ten, uh, eight, nine years ago, and everyone does it now. But this they were sta- doing, yeah. well. This stage had a, the the drum riser it was like a big, huge couch, mm-hmm. um, a TV, like a big mat. It looked like a living room and a giant living room, and they were little like little tiny little guys in the giant living room. It was so great. And they sounded fantastic. I went down to L.A. to see them. I drove all the way down to L.A., which is like six hours. Saw them at the Whiskey, and it was great. Then I saw them the next night in Long Beach, and there were about thirteen or about 35 people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so good. The great thing is, like, English is their second language, yet their lyrics are better than most English yeah. speaking. Yeah, that band is so good, man. Um, anyway, and that's also, I guess, the advantage of if you're not from – if, if you're from a, another country, like for, like I'm thinking airborne, right? I'm thinking airborne might end up when when they're all washed up, they'll still go, they'll go be able to go back to Oz and they'll have a career. Whereas if if you kind of, I guess if you're from here and you drop off the um, everyone's radar, yeah, you really DAD struggle. Yeah, is huge. Are, are, they are like is, the Angels in Australia. DAD are mm. legendary in Denmark. Yeah, that they'll always be able to play yeah. decent size arenas. They are the guys. You know what I mean. And so, is Airborne big in Australia? You, you, you know, 
not really because they left very early. You yeah. know, they, they, they left they left very early. Um, but, you know, like the Angels are now – the Angels aren't like a band for people who listen to this show in Australia. They're like just normal mainstream meat and potatoes – band in australia if you if you lived if you if you didn't pay any attention to music at all and, and you knew and, about you knew the angels yeah you, you and got, you knew chrissy amphlett yeah uh, and yeah. you probably knew chris cheney too from yeah living in yeah living in probably a bit later you know i guess and the living in would yeah they can so they can go and play rsls which is like the legion club you know the returned servicemen's club uh-huh, or they yeah. can go play they can go play these places forever and they can you know and so it, it's good. It's 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 they're it's good. mainstream. They're, they're considered mainstream. mainstream. They're considered mainstream. Yeah, yeah. Um, How about the rose tattoo. Are they considered mainstream? In they there's Australia? there's something a bit edgy about them. They're not completely. They had didn't get the respect they deserved really in Australia. You know. Did ang- angry? Uh, did he get elected to public office? No, or he ran? he missed election. He missed election. Yeah, he's very, you know missed election means he lost the election. Yeah, yeah. He didn't. He missed. Yeah, he didn't get elected. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So that would have been cool to have angry. And what was he running as? He's pretty conservative. Yeah, it's like very. No, what was he running? What what? Like it was actually was it actually the, the the party was uh, he was running for I think he was running for New South Wales. Parliament, maybe it's federal, but it was the anti, like basically an anti-Muslim party he was running for, you know? Oh, so he would Very be right wing. So he would be almost considered, he would be like racist considered here. Some people would say that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, the nicest guy, one of the nicest guys, and the guy is a rock and roll, uh, 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 a, uh, what do you call it? A, um, icon. Evangelist for rock and roll. Yeah, he, he is. would have been the best singer f- to replacement for Brian Johnson. Let me say anybody. This. I have a theory. You will laugh at me. I think the rebirth of tattooing worldwide is actually down to Angry Anderson because Probably. because all of those LA rockers. If you read Tommy Lee's biography, oh, yeah, they're all into, into rose tattoos. Right, and, and, and and you read Tommy Lee's biography, he says rockers never got tattoos. No one did except this guy Angry Anderson. And the, and the whole biker rock thing was invented by Rose yeah. Tattoo. And what actually brought tattooing back into the mainstream was the LA bands. Without yes, Angry, exactly. yeah, without Angry, you may not have that sleeve tattoo, and that waitress may have you know. No, may may not have a tattoo. So. I I would I would argue that Angry Anderson is not racist. He is just a um, patriot, anti-immigrant. Maybe that's not racist. He just doesn't want. Uh, see, I think I don't want to get into a political discussion here, but uh, that's not racist. Somebody who hates other ra- who, other races besides themselves is a racist. Somebody who doesn't want foreigners coming into their country for a cert- for whatever reason is not is not a racist that's an i guess that would be considered an isolationist or something like that i am shutting and up a re- i'm a, shutting a up religion isn't a race either is it uh, i mean hating exactly. a religion it's another argument whether you should hate a religion but it's probably not I the right d- term I, I doubt he hates uh, i'm shutting up i'm going to lose <laughs> Two thirds of the audience. Yeah. Anyway, so before we go, we're going to play the last song very soon. Um, I just want to. I also am dabbling in websites. So I've got Hot Metal was a magazine I helped start when I was a kid, um, and it's back as a website. Hot Metal. Hot Metal magazine. It was like the Kerrang of Australia. And when I was like eighteen, I came up came up with the name of Hot Metal. Um, so um, it's back as a website. Don't call up the website on your computer because it's the the theme has crashed and I can't change it. I'm trying to fix it. Is it hot metal hot, it's hotmetalonline.com, but it's um the the actual uh, front page is locked at the moment. There's a technical issue, but uh, there's a but there's a Michael Wilton story just went up. Um, so if you read those websites and you're like, how do you get to interview bands? They're talking of racism, how about that one? Um, is the is the um, Confederate flag racist? Bobby Ingram of Molly Hatchet. Yeah. Oh, is that what this is about? His this video is about. Is it? Is it well, he he answered the question about whether. But then a funny thing happened actually with Bobby Ingram. You'll see that the video it doesn't load because Bobby Ingram got so much um, crap online <laughs> about it that he he sent me an email asking me to take it down and make it private. He did how he actually there was a complaint. There was a complaint to YouTube that said I did not authorize this bootleg interview. 
you can't have a bootleg interview. There's a camera there. He's yeah, talking exactly. to the camera. Yeah, yeah. So basically, he oh, just, he he had it taken down. He, you know, he didn't. He, you know, he complained. He complained. Well, said I, that I had filmed it without permission or something. First crap. of all, I don't think Bobby Ingram's an original member of Molly Hatcher. Maybe he is. Maybe he was a third guitar player. Or a, I don't think he was an original member. But I video. I I had. I went saw them at. Um, I've seen them back when when. The, their glory days, but I was at the Laughlin River Room with my friend Joe Klein, and I I was in, I just came from interviewing Joan Jett, and I brought my camera. I had my camera with me because I just interviewed uh, the, some of the guys in Joan Jett's band, and Molly Hatchett was playing a free concert in the parking lot, and I had my camera out, and I was filming one song of Molly Hatchett, and the and Bobby Ingram asshole pointed to me and said, and and then pointed to his. Uh, roadie guy and then pointed to me and the roadie guy goes i need the tape i said you're not getting the tape there's no way he goes give me the tape now i need the tape i said listen i just interviewed somebody else it's on this tape you're not getting the tape i don't care what you say you're not getting this fucking tape and he just walked away he couldn't do anything about it you're, fuck, so, so, fuck you bobby ingram <laughs> but what so so what he did he, he, he now told, he's gonna kick my ass i'm going to jacksonville no, 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 on listen, october listen. 13th he's gonna look for me and kill me he told youtube that i had filmed an interview without permission you can't do that it's not possible how can you so what like, did he say in so, the interview that was so that well he what so he was talking for? about he was talking about we we did this and we did that and people were commenting under you weren't in the band when this happened you weren't in the band when this happened and, and so he sent me an email saying oh, you know it was oh they were telling him he wasn't in the no, band. What I just say he's not the original member yeah, yeah, yeah. he's, he's <laughs> the, the one original member when I saw them when he told me the, the, the camera the one guy was Dave Lubeck. And I think Dave Lubeck might be dead. I don't know, but he's he was huge, fat. So, yep. so I said, I said, look, there's nothing riding on it for me. And you, with the videos up in out, so the video he, is private. I said, there's nothing riding on this for me. So what did he say? It was so controversial in the interview. Well, he was just talking about things that he uh, the band did when he wasn't in the band. So people were giving oh, him, okay. you know, the comments section underneath he's the video. Like he was a big influence in the southern the, rock scene. The comments section under the video was going ballistic. Uh -huh. Okay, people. So 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 it's so, nothing racist or anything like no, that. No 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 so. that was. A different, that was just a little news angle. Uh, but so what happened was he asked me to take it down. I just said I'll take it down. You know, I said I've got nothing riding on this. I'll just I'll just make it private. You know, and he said that's good. I owe you, right? So I went to Sweden Rock, and I'm like, I asked him for another interview. Okay, he said, and he just just didn't get back to me. You know, okay. yeah, yeah. Anyway. He didn't want the hassle. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I like Molly Hatchet. But uh, yeah, he was a dick trying to get the camera for me. All I was doing was filming a sh uh, one song. What am I going to do? Sell it for big money? No, it's whatever. Yeah, Bobby so, Ingram. So what I was going to say is, if you I saw him when Dave Lubeck was in the band, and I said, I think I even jammed with Dave Lubeck. Remember Dave? Not Dave Lubeck. Dave Lubeck was a guitar player. Danny Joe Brown, the original singer. Remember him? I'm no expert on Molly Hatcher. Okay. I'm no expert on Molly Hatcher. <laughs> That's I, I liked him when I saw him, but, you know. That's the thing. People don't know anything about Molly Hatchett, but um, they got popular right after the Leonard Skinner plane crash. Yeah, yeah. I do so realize that. A lot of people said they capitalized off of the uh, Leonard Skinner plane crash, which is not true. They just happened to be um, around, and people wanted a new local hero, so they made Molly Hatchett their local heroes. But uh, they did... Get big after the plane crash. Do you do you do like a Amazon Associates thing? You know where you get a commission percentage. Uh, yeah, because if you have a look on there, the Twitter feed there for um, Hot Metals, um, Hot Metal Mag uh, Twitter, top seller on no, no, it's in the corner there, oh. Michael. See in the bottom oh, yeah. corner, top seller this week. Back for the attack by Dawkins. So it's already helping their their where, sales. Where, see where down are there. You this? No, it's, it's, it says tweets by Hot Metal Mag in the bottom right corner. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so it's in the top sellers on Amazon now because of the show this week. Back for the attack. So well, there, there you, go. you go. So buy it from me. Um, right. If anybody now, wants to buy the new, <laughs> the new is it? That's not a new docking. Right? No, back for the attack was uh, that yeah. was that was if a anybody want, if kiss anybody of death. needs to replenish their copy of Back for the Attack, <laughs> go to hotmetalonline.com. So you manage this website? Yeah, but um, as I said, the front page is locked at the moment, and. Um, but oh, yeah, White Line Fever. Okay. Yeah, White Line Fever is the um, is yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Anyway, but anyway, if you if you ever wanted to write for a, a website, you interview bands, and you don't know how to get involved yes. in that, send me an email: hotmetalmag at gmail dot com. Okay? What will you do for them? You'll give um, them some I'll, tips? I'll, I'll no no I'll hook you up with um, I'll give you some music to review and um, you know oh, get involved. There you, go. Yeah, you can yeah. write for Hot Metal. Yeah.
Um, it's going to look a lot better. Like I said, the front page is locked at the moment. I've got to fix it. <laughs> I, what do you mean it's locked? Well, the 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 um the theme is is, is shat itself basically. So I can't actually change the widgets or anything. You know? Ah, who cares? Nobody, nobody. I've mine's fucked too. So don't worry about it. <laughs> mine's been fucked for ten years. <laughs> <laughs> my high, my site just got hacked last week, and. Uh, I got all, all these emails from my um, vir- v- virtual web host or whatever it's called saying that uh, there was a denial service attack and I need to do something about it within 24 hours or my site's going to be shut down. And I had all these $4 bills. I had like 100 invoices for like four ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> so my site's fucked. So you don't have to feel bad about it. I hope you don't mind that I don't listen to White Line Fever. No, you don't listen to anything. I do not listen to anybody else, any other music podcast, for the simple reason that I do not want to rip anybody off. I want to, uh, because I will rip you off if I hear your podcast. I will, I will probably steal, accidentally steal a bit from your show. I'll I'll tell you a secret, Michael. Because you don't listen to other podcasts, you don't know that everyone else is ripping you off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. I mean, really, like, um, yeah. Anyway. On behalf what do they of all, do? How do they just tell me? How do they rip me off? Well, I don't know. Like, like there's one I listen to. They do, um, uh, and he, the friends of mine who do it. So I'm, I'm, I'm not accusing them of ripping you off. But it's a big coincidence. They start the podcast by saying, "I'm recording this show at blah blah time at blah 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 uh-huh. blah." Yeah, you know, it's like I've only, the only other person I've heard say that is, uh-huh. is you and stuff and like I'm that. And I'm drinking this. No, they don't do that. They don't do the Descartes thing. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, talking metal, is it? No, no, it's not. It's not. It's not talking okay. about no, because no. they have a show open that is, uh, or something. They their catchphrase is very similar to, um, to my show open, which is uh, like the original. Or, uh, I don't know, but whatever. Often Every, imitated, never equal. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, my, uh, my actually, my um, theme music is care. from the Hell City Glamis, who are a really good Aussie band who you've never heard of, and I don't think they're on my. I think I have heard of them. I think I think they're on my thing here, but you we can't Sebast- we can't talk forever. Do you know Sebastian Rockets? Oh, you're gonna miss the show, aren't you? Sebastian Rock? Ro- no, no, no. I'm gonna I'm mm. gonna get an Uber and I'm gonna leave my iPod in this Uber. You know Sebastian Rockets? <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I know of them. Strangely enough, not through being Australian, but through this program. Oh, okay. All right. Um, this is actually um actually let's play. They're dear departed. If um yeah, the, the, I'm not. Um, yeah, Dear Departed, um, Sydney Band, the Hell City Glamours. Um, Do I have them on my No, well, they're, they're, it's all queued up right here. And this is actually the song from which I steal, with permission, from guitarist Mo Mayhem, their, um, um, my, my theme for my well, podcast. My theme is stolen from a band called The Upper Crust, and they know about that too. So. Should, are we ready to play this song? It's called I'm Not Here by the yes, much-missed Hell City Glamours. Hell City Glamours.
there you go. Check, check. Okay, there you go. Hell, Hell City Glamours. I do have Hell City Glamours on my iTunes. Uh, the album I have or is, is called Broken Glass, um, Beatless Hearts or something like that. They're doing a Guns N' Roses pose, like sitting down in the alley against a brick wall. Yeah, they, they were a great band, actually. They, they, their album... Um, the only real album they put out another one, which is kind of demos and that. But the self-titled debut album is awesome. Like, there's not one filler on it. I, lo- I love it. I, love I was it. telling you off the microphone. There was a that was around the time where there were a lot of uh, bands that sounded like this, which I liked a lot. Mm. There's definitely a, a, a huge Guns N' Roses. Uh, yeah, like second influence. wave Guns N' Roses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With well, speaking of Guns N' Roses, uh, I heard a rumor that because you know Cliff Williams. Uh, Announced his retirement from ACDC. And first of all, I would like to um, formally announce that uh, I'm available <laughs> for the bass playing gig. Can I write the press release? <laughs> yeah, I should send out a press release that I'm available. But I heard a rumor. I don't know if it's a good rumor or a bad rumor, but I heard a rumor that Duff McKagan is going to be the new ACDC bass player. And I want to go also go on record as saying that's a horrible idea. Um, yeah, why don't get back Mark Evans? You know, he's he's in Sydney, he's sitting on his backside. It'd be great. The, you I mean, know, original bass player in ACDC. Why do we want two guys from Guns N' Roses in ACDC? That's lame. You might as well get Slash to play rhythm guitar. Yeah, it's kind of it, 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 like. But would people would would people go? People would go, wouldn't they? Yeah, they don't care as long as Angus is up there, they'll go. Yeah, but I was saying to you while the song was playing, like. I, on the way, I did this thing going the long way around um, in, in June before I got, no, I, I, went on the long, I went the long way back. So my first full day in the UK, I got married on June 30 in, um, in, in, in Ireland, but my first full day in the UK, I went to see Axel um, with ACDC and then on the and, way. And how was it? I, I loved it. I thought it was awesome. I thought like, <laughs> like, cause to me it's like, like, and then on the way back, I saw Guns N' Roses in Nashville, uh-huh. you know, and, and to me. The Guns N' Roses thing, it was good, but it was like, you know, um, I was, were they that much different musically with Bumblehead and Bucketfoot? I mean, not really. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's the same show, but because the guy at the top had and, and yeah. uh, you know, th- there's 40,000 extra people there. Whereas I thought the ACDC thing was completely, like, it was fresh. Like, it was great to hear those old Bon Scott songs again. And uh, I believe they finished the tour. They played Problem Child for the first time in 14 years. Yeah. You know, you, you're, not, you're not sold on it. Uh, well, it, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it making good songs in the set list, but it sounds like ACDC with Axl Rose singing. That's all. It does. It's a shame that we all know who Axl Rose was first, and so no one can judge him just on the job he's doing. Yeah, if it was an, ungo- if it was an unknown guy, I would say, yeah, he sounds okay. He looks stupid. <laughs> but, uh, he sounds fine. Did, did you go to either... Did you go I to saw them, Guns N' Roses here? No, or? I didn't go to Guns N' Roses here. No. I did go to ACDC when um, they came like uh, last year. Mm. They played AT&T Park. It was great, but there mm. was, it was Brian Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually saw the first show on the tour at uh, Coachella. The, so I saw the, yeah. I saw the first, first show of Brian's last um, tour, and then I saw... Um, they were fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, but like I said, I love hearing those Bon Scott songs. I, and yeah. I just... Like, I... I don't know. Like, I, I just think we don't want to be challenged, you know? Like, we're, we're at that age where we're kind of like, ACDC is Brian Johnson, and we don't want to see anyone else there. I'm but fine. I, it, should be, it should be Angry Anderson. It would be a reborn ACDC. Angry Anderson is, would be the perfect singer for ACDC. I know that no, he won't be, but uh, never happened. But. Uh, you but disagree? I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree, but I... Thought Axel did a good job, and it's great. The Tats apparently the Tats are doing some um, festivals this uh, summer, our summer. So uh, we're going to be able to see Rose Tattoo again. I don't know if we've got any live music out of them, but Rose Tattoo are playing some shows coming up. So that's awesome. Unfortunately, I'm I don't think I'll be there for that it. That last Rose Tattoo studio album with Black Eyed Bruiser, fantastic. Yeah, come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like it. Yeah, the songs. Was the song was actually called Love and Kisses, but the chorus was I just want someone to fuck, wasn't it? Uh, on the la- yeah, last, yeah, yeah, that's tattoo. called uh, that one. Blood Brothers. Uh, no, uh, yeah, um, there's a lubricated. song. Lubricated. Is that is that it? I don't know. What's Man About Town? Sweet Meat. Sweet Meat. It's not Man About Town. Uh, uh, we're not going to play them all to find out which one it is. But anyway, it I was, would uh, be. I would love to close out with a Rose Tattoo tune. 
<laughs> uh, it's we- your show. I'm not. I'm the sidekick. Sorry, boss. No, 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 no. So I don't mean to uh, step on your show. No, no, no. Can we don't can fire we, me? Can we please. play? A, can we play? Can we play a little bit of a Screaming Jets song? Oh, just play. Oh, we can close out with Screaming Jets. We can. Pl- yeah, you got probably have to leave soon because you're gonna miss the uh, Mr. Big. You already have your ticket. Yeah, yeah. I got Are they it. sold out. Oh, I don't know. I think I think it's just a warm up show because they're going on the Monsters of Rock. Thing. Oh, the Monsters Rock Cruise. My guitar player in uh, Featherwitch is playing in Vane on the Monsters. He's playing with Vane. Do you like Vane? Eh, I don't really. No. I like that's the first album. I don't have it on He's CD. He's the guitar yet. player for Vane on the Monsters of Rock tour. Um, okay, we're going to finish now. Um, thank you, Michael, for this wonderful opportunity. Well, thank you for uh, donating. I, I, it's very much appreciated. Uh, my pocketbook thanks you. <laughs> and. Uh, and on behalf of all the listeners, thank you for doing this for so long. Thank you. We appreciate it. I know you're bullshitting, but... No, I'm not, I'm not bullshitting. So I'm, nice. not, I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> yeah, how, how many people out there are thinking, like, I wonder what it's like in there. Like, what's the room like? What's the house like? What, you know, because it's like part of your life. You, you met actually, my wife. Yeah, exactly. And my dogs. Yes, yes. One of my dogs almost bit him because she had puppies and she's protecting her puppies. And uh, my my daughter's friend, Jackie Hollywood, came over and to bring out Martina's present, which I'm bringing to her. I'm going to visit Martina in Washington. And uh, Lafitte bit her. Took a, took a chunk out of her leg, so uh, he I, I was reluctant to pat. I was. Yeah, she's protecting her puppies, but yeah. Well, thank you for coming over. It was really nice to have you over. Did you like? I, I made dinner. I uh, had um, it was today was the CSA delivery, so I had rockfish, which I think is a cop out for the uh, delivery fish delivery because rockfish is so plentiful out here. But in defense of the guy, uh, he's out of town on a book tour, so you know he probably couldn't get anything else. So, but it was good. Uh, was the rockfish good? It, it was right? awesome, and the hush puppies and the broccoli. You know, if you're a guy traveling on your own, you don't get to eat steamed broccoli much. So that was the healthiest yeah. thing I'm going to fr- have. I deep fried the fish and the hush puppies, but it was still. I didn't overcook it, so it was, it was awesome. It was really awesome. I recommend anyone to come and do this. Yeah. Um, come on over my house. Oh, you, so you think it was worth the hundred bucks? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Good. I mean, I mean, I've been donating anyway. It's like it's yes. just, it's just like I, the way it's twenty months donations, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. So this is off the new Screaming Jets album. Thank you, Michael, for having me here. Thank and, you for coming. I'm going to give you a ride. I'll give you a ride either to the to the Muni station or. We'll figure it out when we, when we get out the show. It's, by the way, it's true what he says. He, off microphone, he's a pretty quiet guy. Didn't I am he? very shy. He is. It's not the microphone's not on. Yeah, yeah. I need to have a microphone in my hands at and, all times, especially when there's girls around, because I am an introvert, and I, I act like a complete um, boob. He says yeah, that, but is it, I actually can see there's some truth in it. Okay, new. This is off the, the truth. I'm a boob. Yeah. I'm mine. <laughs> no, not a boob. Not that. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty quiet when the mic yes, is on. I yeah. don't lie. I'm. I'm. I'm not bullshitting. Yeah. So, uh, this is called. Snack. But I am a nice guy. I'll tell you, I'm decent. You are. I'm just boring off mic. That's all. No, no, no. You're not. And this is a lovely neighborhood you live in. It's awesome. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. No, not many blacks. In it. All right. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna play. <sighs> Smack in the mouth by uh, <laughs> Michael told me he does no editing, but I'm thinking I do not. I do not edit. <laughs> here's, uh, here's the screaming jets. Thank you, I everyone. Am, by the way, I'm not racist. I'm just making jokes. Uh, this is the screaming jets. It's off the new album yes. called Chrome, and the song is called Smack in the Mouth. I like this tune, by the way. <laughs> Oh, wait, are we closing? Are are we talking after this song's over? That's up to you. Are we gonna Are we gonna talk? All right, we'll play over? this song and then we will uh, do we'll do the plugs and stuff after this song. All right. <laughs>
All right, there you go. All right. We'll close out with that. We found the roast Okay. Yeah. So, Steve Mascord, thank you so much for coming on the show, friend. It's very nice to have you on again. I would figure we had to come back on and do the plug. So, how can we find you? Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at The Real Stevis or WLF Podcast. Or you can email me, uh, probably best at hotmetalmag at gmail.com. Uh, I'm on Instagram. I think I'm Stevis, S T E A V I S. Is that all? Is that all you need? Will you please send me all that info so I can do the show notes? So before certainly, you, certainly. Before and I you appreciate you now plane, calling me Steve, too. Thank you. Yeah, Steve. <laughs> right. All right. Okay. So before you get on the plane, make sure you send me a link so that I can post this tomorrow. Okay. Right. That's awesome. All right. Steve Mascord, thank you again, friend. Thank I'm you. Shake your hand on camera because I'm going to be too shy when the camera turns off. <laughs> thank you on behalf of all the listeners. There you go. Yeah. Both of you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you want to close out with the Rose Tattoo song, the one you're talking the about? The one I was talking about, it, it, wasn't, it was on 2002's Pain. That was the one before Blood Brothers. Yes. That's a long time between albums. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, everyone's dying in Rose Tattoo, aren't they? Yeah. You know, it's very sad. Ang How old is Angry? He's got to be in his 70s, mid-70s. Uh, yeah, I think he's still in his 60s. Oh, late yeah, 60s. Yeah. He's been playing, um, he's been doing like an all-star tour recently. How's his health? Uh, he's good. I think he seems to be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All star tour with who? Well, it is like uh, I think there's like guys from uh, I think Mark Evans from ACDC. Uh -huh. It was a uh, um, it was the Blood, Sweat, and Beers tour. Right, which, uh, named after the book. Named after the book by the great Murray Englehart, a good friend of mine. I have the book and fan of the Penrith Panthers NRL team. Uh, he just whinges to me about rugby league all the time. Uh, Murray would never talk about music, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and yeah, and he also did that great ACDC book, didn't he? Uh, Maximum Rock and Roll. But, um, I don't have that one. Yeah. So how do, what are we talking about? Uh, yeah. So, so angry has been doing this tour, uh, an all-star tour, and now he's getting the tats back together. They're going to play some festivals, uh, this in the next uh, few Very months. Nice. A great front man. And he, he, you can tell it's everything that he does is from the heart. That's that right. It's a real deal. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So and a true original. Um, and so the song we're going to play uh, to close out this show, which has been a great experience for me, as you can imagine. I'm sure plenty of you want to come in and do this as well. Uh, so worth the hundred bucks, you would say. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's awesome. It's been, been great. A, a night out is a hundred bucks. If I was to drink this many beers in a club, it would cost me close to a hundred bucks. Yeah, I gave you a dinner, got a bunch of beers. That's more than a hundred bucks. There you go. There All you right, go. let's make it 150. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> It's more than value for money. It's like, you know. Right. So what it's is, like the Uber of broadcasting. It's exactly. just. <laughs> I need, I need a, a, a donation app. What is the. Song we're going to play, play? We're going to play uh, La, uh, Kisses and Hugs, Kisses and hugs. Okay. by the mighty, one of a kind, All right, Rose Steve, Tattoo. Steve Mascord, thanks again for coming on the show. If you would like to come on the show, you're ever going to be in San Francisco. We can do it on Skype too, friends. All you got to do is go to Rock and Roll Geek at rockandrollgeek.com and there's a uh, friends and family donations link and everything's right there. Like Stephen Mascord, uh, well, he probably didn't. He's going to give me cash, I think, which is cash is good too. It's fine. I forgot where I was going. Rockandrollgeek.com. Send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. If you think that I'm an asshole for taking people's money for coming on the show, send me an email to rockandrollgeek at gmail.com and say, Michael Butler, you're a money-grubbing son of a bitch, and I will never listen to your show again because you steal money from your listeners. Put that in the subject line. If you would like to... All right, enough of this bullshit. All right, you know how to reach me. Here's Kisses and Hugs from Rose Tattoo.
It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. 